college football fans, welcome back to the College Ball Show. He's Marshall, I'm Chris, and we're here to discuss, what else, college football. And man, you know, we had ourselves a pretty damn good week, if you really think about it. Now, of course, there was another double digits game canceled and all that good stuff, but we had some upsets. We had some super close calls and comebacks. We had some ass whoopings. We had some more coaches making excuses after the game. <clears throat> Florida Gators. Um, I mean, we have a variety of things to talk about, no doubt about it. Obviously, the big upset of the week. Uh, LSU puts it together against Florida in the Fog Bowl, 37-34. A shoe came flying out of the fog and nothing but excuses from the head coach. That's back to back. Well, I shouldn't, you know, back, to, not back to back losses, but back to back press conferences where they lost and he said some stupid stuff. Um, obviously, Coastal Carolina, you know, wanted to stay around and unbeaten before their big game. They did, they came back on Troy. Colorado last week had some folks saying, hey, we're undefeated. Shouldn't we get in? How about you just say, screw it and change the rules for us? And then they proceed to get beat. Big, the Big Ten, by the way, did change the rules for Ohio State. Uh, Mike Haynes got the biggest whooping they've gotten since 1998, McNabb style. Um, but my Gophers did get a nice little win over Nebraska. So, I mean, there is a variety of games to talk about. Like I said, we actually had a whole lot of fun when it, when push comes to shove on that weekend. And, you know, we got some games coming up, no doubt about it. Now, you know, the one that stands out, obviously number two, Notre Dame against number three, Clemson, the rematch from a great game. Some other games that are going to be fun, Louisiana, our Cajun, raging Cajuns, one loss going against, Coastal Carolina, Oklahoma, Iowa State is a good game. Um, so there are a variety of Tulsa, Cincinnati didn't get to play last week, but it really didn't matter because they had to play back to back, you know, weeks anyway in the conference final here. So that that works. And there are some miscellaneous, you know, games kind of just thrown in there that we may talk about as well. If this is your first time listening to the College Ball Show, welcome. It streams live right here and archives on blogtalkradio.com forward slash rope and dope radio. We do previews. We do predictions. We do the crafty crappy pick of the week, which, by the way, another W. You took it right to the bank if you were listening to us. That's at the last, that is the last segment of the show. And just a bunch of betting banter, whether it's, you know, going over how the hell we lost or taking a look at, against the spreads, upsets of the week, yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, you don't have to go to Blog Talk and download it right there on rope dope if you don't want to. Um, you can find this college ball show under the rope dope radio podcast on Apple Podcast, on iHeartRadio, Player FM, tune in really across the board almost. We're also part of the Grueling Truth Sports Podcast Network, which is all over the place, including Spotify. While you're at it, why don't you head on over to thegruelingtruth.com. And one more thing. If you're thinking about cutting the cord, maybe you have, you're not quite happy, I got something for you. It's called AT&T TV Now. They have a seven-day free trial. It's live streaming cable, no annual contract. The plan starts as low as $55 a month. You can stream it anywhere. Of course, they have the cloud DVR. And just for signing up right now, you get a free month, free 30-day trial of HBO Max. If you sign up for the AT&T TV Now Max package, that already includes HBO Max, plus a free month of Showtime, which is normally $11 a month. That's AT&T TV Now, live streaming cable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host and see what's going on with him. How you doing, Marshall? How the hell are you, buddy? Uh, I'm good. And, uh, you know, normally, normally I always piss you off and ask you a random – unplanned basketball question on our on our NBA podcast. So I'm going to start off today for a football question. This is a non-prepped Jeopardy question for you, a $500 value question. Okay, Chris? Donovan McNabb, 1990. Uh, 
E8. No, go ahead. You actually named a purse. I need you actually to name a piece of clothing. Um, okay. <laughs> this article of clothing was was chucked in the air and cost an upset. Do you have for five hundred dollars, Chris? What name an article of clothing that caused controversy in football this weekend? I'm going to say a mask that was not fully up. It was just on the note or it was just below the notes. Just kidding. No, it was a it was a cleat flying through the air. I think the fog actually brought it in. I don't believe the kid actually did anything wrong. What 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 a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful, beautiful moment. <laughs> Unless you're a Florida football fan. Unless <laughs> you're a Florida football fan. <laughs> so I, I'm my I, I I got a best friend and his younger cousin is like a little brother to me. He's a huge LSU fan. Like no lie, the guy always he always supports his Tigers. Um. He, he was watching the game and we were watching together and kind of texting back and forth in the group chat. And he was like, what just happened? And I had thought it was one of those situations where, you know, those players have like, sometimes they have like those little, uh, like, like the, um, uh, play sheets or something yeah, sheets or, yeah. or, or like, or, or, towel. or a towel. Sometimes yeah, those exactly. guys have a towel. Yeah. And I thought what I'd seen was I thought that the Florida Gator player, like ripped the towel off and chucked this. I was like, okay. And then the second you saw a thing fly in the air, you saw flags fill the air too. It was chuck of item and then boom, three flags fly in the air. I'm like, oh, oh shit. Okay. But what, so I was watching, I actually had like, I had like UFC fights. I had football games. I had a bunch of stuff going on. I was using like my laptop and my two TVs, everything. So I didn't actually hear the call. But, Chris, honestly, the sweetest part to me <laughs> is the fact that the ref said um, personal foul uh, after the play was over and sports, like throwing a cleat 20 yards down the field. Yeah, right. <laughs> he actually <laughs> he actually said for throwing a shoot 20 yards down right. the field. <laughs> He's got a good arm, too. I mean, they might they may have their replacement for Trask. It, 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 it was a good truck, but man. You just had a feeling in your gut, like, oh, oh, okay, I, I see you. All right, well, you screwed up there. Now, now LSU did just enough. I actually didn't like how conservative they got. I mean, you talk about having some faith in your kicker and that kicker having some balls. I mean, that yeah, hundred percent credit, dude. You're on the road in a foggy atmosphere, and Coach O is like, dude, fifty-four yards, go get it. And I mean <laughs> that. We're talking about our home team, Minnesota. Like, sure as hell, Dan Bailey ain't kicking a 54-yard field goal. But, I mean, dude, uh, cr- credit. And, seven, too, by the way. Or, uh, dude, that, that takes that takes some stones in college football. And he and he drilled it. Like, I because LSU, so LSU, in case you missed it, which I hope you didn't, because it was funny to see. Again, unless you're a Gators fan. If so, you know, tough times. Um, It, it, was, a th- it was a third down play. And I don't even know if the receiver caught the ball or he dropped it, but he was short of it. He was going to be like fourth and five. And after the play is over, a y, the LSU wide receiver's shoe had fallen off, and it was just right near the play. So the Florida Gator DB just really, just stupidly, just picks up the shoe and chucks it. And most of Twitter was like, dude, what the hell are you thinking? I, I, I saw one comment, Chris, say, well, Find me, find me a rule book in the in in the rules stating that no one can throw a shoe. Well, to me, it, it's a part of your equipment, and that's really no different than dude. If you picked if you picked up and let's say the dude's helmet slipped off and you just chucked his helmet, or you know, or if the mouth guard, or it, it, you know, let's say you know a shoulder pad or it, any right, piece of yeah. equipment. I mean, yep. there maybe isn't a rule that says, hey, Chris, and twenty nine dash B. A player will receive a personal foul for chucking a shoe. But again, it's no different to me than, hey, dude, you chuck the dude's helmet. Like, that's that's going to be a flag. So I mean, I'm sure part- there is a rule that actually covers that. You know what I mean? I bet yeah. you there is. I bet you that dude didn't have his playbook out when he was saying that. And, and yeah, of course, that's for, Twitter. For the, so it's probably a Gator playbook. fan. But I'm sure there's something sent of a player's not allowed to throw the opposing yeah. team's equipment. Like you said, so, helmet. 
same yeah. difference. Yeah. So he does it. They go down and kick a field goal. Now, now then LSU also screwed up again. They, LSU plays this really, really passive defense. I mean, Pelini was playing a prevent defense that was like massive prevent. So Florida goes down there and actually gets three easy completions because I don't know what the fuck Pelini was thinking at all. I I was cursing up a storm there because I was like, dude, you just had a miracle gift of a, of a weird play and you get the lead and now you're dropping people back. So uh, Florida starts their drive on like the 30 and pelini has got like safeties back and you're like their own 20. I'm like, dude, you, 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 I don't think Florida's going to chuck an 80 yard touchdown pass. So Florida, you know, hell Trask calls some great plays and dinks and dunks and they get up for a field goal. And then it was really cool too, because with Florida kicking this field goal with the, with, there was so much fog as we were talking before the show, they had a camera yeah. angle. Pretty much you were behind the offense. Mm-hmm. It was phenomenal. Kick, yeah, it was. It, it was kind of had like that Assassin's Creed video game fog look to you see it in like their game previews for commercials. And I honestly thought, Chris, that when the kick went up, I thought it was good because the angle and the trajectory I saw from my and I got pretty good vision, I, I think normally, but I thought it was going to be good. But as the ball went outside, it kind of hit the fog. And then I saw the officials do the, the wave of the hand sideways. I was like, oh, shit. And down goes Florida. And as you were saying, that now makes the SEC game um, much more title game uneventful. I mean, unless Florida could somehow knock off Bam, which I highly doubt. But, hey, uh, it wh- what, a, what a crazy game. And I'm going to make one point. I'll throw it to you. Massive props to Coach O. This dude had 14 players get drafted. I believe four or five stars opt out on the season. Um People have been giving him tons of shit. Like, the, the dude's been getting ripped left and right by the media. And, and you know, rightfully so to some extent. Like, a coach is always going to take the highs and the lows. But you got your team ready to play and went in and was a 23-point dog. So, clearly, like, dude, the the, the people aren't quitting on him. The, those I, I guarantee those kids love him. Yes, they've had a lack of numbers this year. They've had a lot of reasons that they could have mailed it in. But I think that was a good remembrance of, dude, this dude is still a great coach. His kids go all out for him, and and it showed, Chris, because that's not a that was not an easy win at all for them. No, not at all. I thought it was a great win, and obviously they got that you know that that interception that helped them a lot, gave them a lead, and and it, it, but it's not like they had like a mate, you know, it was twenty like twenty four to seventeen. I think was the well twenty twenty seven to seventeen because they did get a field goal at the beginning of the the first half, but. I mean, you know, they stayed with them, and then they got down 31 to 27. Then that's where I thought, okay, you know. And then they also had a three and out. I thought, okay, dude, it's. I think they're going to start pulling away. But credit to LSU, they come back with a drive after you know it was back to back three and outs by both offenses. They come back 34 to 31, and then were able to have one, two more. Um, times that they had the, the ball uh, before they kicked a field goal. So that, that was, that was huge, dude. And obviously, you know, the tight end was missing that, that plays a part. Um, but the defense for Florida has always been a little like, mm, I don't know. I mean, it, it was horrible early. Then it was like, yeah, it's a little better, a little better, but still a, a problem. And ultimately it caught up with them in general, but for the Florida coach, I mean, we remember we remember the A and M loss earlier this season, and he was mad because Texas was allowing you know fans in the stands, and and that we better have fans in the stands. And by the way, you did. Um, we better have fans in the stands, and just making an excuse. And then of course, you know, they had to shut down the facility, and they had a two week break. And the co- the coach got COVID too, right? Am I right with that? Yes, the coach got he COVID. did. Yeah. And then after this one, I mean, come on, dude. First of all, he's talking about the kid. You know, the kid made a football move, basically. <laughs> you know, it's like a normal thing when that's a disciplining teaching moment that you could you could have for the kid right there. You're kind of letting him off the hook. I'm sure he didn't let him off the hook. You know, in the locker room, but even that. And then he's bringing up Ohio State. Well. I guess we shouldn't even play because, 
you know, it's better if you don't play. It's like, dude, you lost. Take it on the chin and move on. Well, or, you know, if these big schools who are just getting the royalty from the NCAA, you know, what could have happened this week, Chris, we could have had actually an excellent game. We could have had Ohio State play Texas A&M. But these big schools don't got the balls that LSU and Coastal Carolina have. Excuse me, BYU and Coastal Carolina have. Like, we easily, easily could have had a Ohio State A&M game this past Saturday. That would have been incredible. But, oh, uh, well, we're, oh, we, we can't afford that loss. Like, we're, we're a top-end school. Like, we got to, you know, protect our name and make sure we make the playoffs. Well, hell, BYU and Coastal Carolina said, F it. We're going to go and play. They played a hell of a football game. And, yes, BYU lost, but they lost by one yard, and they put up a hell of a fight. But, no, because, yeah, dude, that, that's such a stupid point. No, you, you should have the guts to trust your team and go out there and earn it. The one thing I'll say is neither of those teams were in range to get a ranking. So it's really just to get to New Year's. So to, to take that risk with them, it's easier to take that risk for them. To be fair, to be fair. And what day did that that actually get canceled? Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, so, yeah, like what day is, is did it actually get canceled? Was it Wednesday or Tuesday? Oh, Ohio I State, Michigan? Remember. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was early in the week. I mean, they, you know. Yeah, it was they, Tuesday. Yeah. It so was Tuesday or Wednesday. They could have done like BYU did and can't, you know, because I think BYU sure. made their decision to play Coastal on Thursday. Again, yeah. you know, but again, well, well, hell, when you're getting these special treatment from the committee, why even go play? But it would have been, you know, with these top notch schools, though, they get a lot of love. So I'd be. Well, I'm, would I'm, A&M want to do it, though, too? I mean, do we know that for a fact? I don't know, but, but I'm I just, hear you. I yeah, hear you. but and if and if A and M wins, all of a sudden, dude, your 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 resume of making the final four looks a lot more inviting. You know, I, like they they really had nothing to lose because right now they're probably not getting in unless something sure. crazy happens. So from that standpoint, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I hear that. But what about? I mean, either way, the the Florida coach is just like he's doing a good job you could tell they're a better team with them sure but take a loss just take it on the chin dude just take it on the freaking chin man agreed we haven't agreed. really talked early about the usc trojans but since they haven't lost the game since they beat ucla in once again comeback fashion um that quarterback thompson um is damn good we mentioned him thompson robinson uh, is damn good but slow Slovis, is it Slovis, Slovis, Slovis? He Slovis. had five, five t- touchdowns, and, I mean, what a freaking comeback. It looked, um, you know, it looked bad, down 28-10 to 10 right at the beginning of the first, or in the second half, they went down and scored to make it an 18-point lead, and, you know, they just kind of came back, grinded back 28-23, they end up going down again by double figures, 34 to 23. Didn't, you know, had an 11 play drive, came back, got it within one, got a pick, got up 36 to 35, got back down 38 to 36 from a field goal, and ended up getting the job done under, uh, I mean, what was it like? Yeah, it says 16 seconds of that drive. So, I mean, in the closing moments, get a touchdown. That was crazy, dude. And just don't count USC out in the last, like, four minutes. Yeah, we – I mean – It just so no, happens. All this guy do is win. And this guy is in his second conference final. He'll probably win his second Pac-12 title. And my co-host shows him no respect, folks. No respect. He's like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not going to, again, we have a very talented quarterback who helps who helps out for a coach who's clearly just not the best game planner. I mean, that, he got down 28, to, I, I don't know. We, we've had to come from behind in each game. It, it's one thing to have a team that runs a team out the gym, but we don't run teams out the gym. We just always sneak in the back door last second. So, again, a nice win, but I, I just, I'm, I'm not going to be giving Clay Helton too much credit but i will give 
Keith and the slow of slide, correct? Because that dude can play some football. Uh, we, you know, back and forth, as Chris said, the whole game, uh, UCLA kicked a uh, field goal to go up. And then USC, I mean, Slovis calmly goes on the field. We had like 53 seconds left in the game. But then, so UCLA uh, kicks it off. The the big play was the run back. Like we, I think, I want to say within five yards, we ran the ball back to the 45 to 50 yard line. Yeah, you're right. Yep. So that, that was probably the play of the game near at the end because now in college, I mean, everyone knows that you, the clock stops on a first down, but dude, when you get almost half the field down and you have a decent kicker, like, dude, that was huge. So we had to get maybe 20 yards, but hell we say F it. We throw a deep pass. I believe the second play of the drive for like 40 yards down to the 10 and then Slovis throws a nice little fade in the end zone for a touchdown. I mean, they, they scored in almost like 30 seconds. So UCLA actually had a chance to move back down the field themselves. Um, but an, another nice win, um, a, a crazy one again, but yes, we're undefeated on the year. Um, you can't our, fire him this year, right? No, no. I, I, I still don't think he's the guy to, I don't think he's the answer, but yeah, we've, we've found a way to get it done. I, I will say a stat that kind of shows why lose some faith at times. This was the first game we've played five games this year. This was the first game where we scored a third quarter touchdown. To me, that shows our clearly our halftime adjustments are trash. Like, especially we, I mean, you see how high power our offense is, but it's like we always got to do that the last second because we're trailing. So, you know, I just, I don't, it, it was really weird. I, that stat actually really surprised me. First ever third quarter touchdown of the year. But, anyways, right. let, let's give well, credit slow. to the players. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but in another thing, Slovis wise, if you think it was his, you know, doing, well, who recruited him to the University of uh, Southern California? <laughs> Just true, messing with true. You. Yeah. So, um, but again, defensively, UCLA made a lot of big plays. I know, I know that obviously Kelly's done his time there, and he's trying to put together a pretty nice squad. So there's quite a few defensive mishaps. Um, but hey, they won the game. Obviously, it's oh, it's when it they it's a big rivalry game. I know that it's not. Bama Auburn, but I mean, it is one of those games where on the West Coast, it's it's always been a big rivalry. The games are normally always close. It's always a lot of trash talking, fun to watch. So I was happy they got the W. Um, that was a good win. Um, we'll see. You know, I I think that they have a great chance to beat Oregon. Oregon's not been the regular team they are this year. Um, I know a couple of weeks ago, like an ESPN article projected that USC could sneak into the Final Four. If they go undefeated and win the Pac-12, I think with how it's currently set up, I don't know if that's going to happen. But hell, to no. go undefeated this year and run the table—that that is a good step in the right direction. Um, again, we yeah. have a talented court. Yeah, it, hell, I I, I can't. And they'll complain. be in the Rose Bowl, so I mean that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to play uh, someone from the big, maybe like Indiana or something. Who knows? But yeah, overall, uh, a, a nice win. They beat a cross town rival. Had another late dramatic game. Um, yeah, I, I'm very happy. Again, I'm, I'm still not a huge fan of the coach, but for this year, you can't give them too much shit because they are winning games, even if they're late at the last second. So, um, I think Slovis has a chance to be a Sunday guy. Again, I, I, I don't follow stuff like McShay does. I don't know all the resources, but he throws a really good ball and the kids just got, he, he's got to tell, you know, there's some quarterbacks yeah. in college where you just watch and you, okay, it's fourth quarter, the game's on the line and they just get that presence in the pocket like dude there i'm good things are chill like he 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 doesn't seem to lose his he doesn't seem to lose his um focus much the dude's always just there's a calm confidence in him which not everyone has well speaking of slap in the face and uh just not a calming thing to read um this was with 333 Six left of the third quarter. North Carolina had put up 576 yards my, on oh Mike Dean's defense. Uh, 670 was the previous record by. Um, actually, it's funny because uh, UCL that was UCLA's record, but McNabb back in '98 had just tore him up. And of course, you know what's crazy. A lot of it had to do with the rush. It wasn't the pass. They're, you know, they're known for both, but really passing. They had two 
runners to go over 500 yards. Overall, they ran for 55 carries, 50, 554 yards, six, touch, six touchdowns. Carter had 308. Williams had 236. They only threw the ball 19 times. I mean, why why throw it when you don't, you know, it, it doesn't even matter. They had 31 first downs. I mean, it was uh, uh, 40 to 19 on the on the on the time of possession clock. It was just disgusting. The defense coordinator is definitely going to get um, canned. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. I know that our defense coordinators, a lot of our defense coaches have been out the last couple of weeks with COVID and all that, and and that's great and all, but still 500 yards plus of rushing. Uh, does not uh, it just it's just just really ugly but a big win by North Carolina um, in, in a good way they had kind of been funky of late too so they got a nice uh, big win to close the season as I mentioned Coastal Carolina another really fun game to go back and forth Carolina ended up coming back on that 42 to 38 survived against Troy who's not as bad as some folks may think Iowa kept it moving against Wisconsin. Wisconsin's having problems 28 to seven. Like I mentioned, Colorado was talking about, well, well, we're undefeated and we don't get to play USC. It it got, it got post or canceled. So, so can we get in and then Utah smacks them in the mouth? No, that was a close game. 38 to 21. It was a competitive game. I should say a lot of good games in general. Bama just destroyed Arkansas. No huge Surprise there, but the way they've been doing it on offense, Alabama um, becomes the first major college football team to go 10-0 and in conference play. It marks the Alabama's fifth undefeated regular season, excluding conference championship games under Nick Saban, 2008, 2009, 2016, 18, and now 2020. So they look damn good doing it. Um, but a really fun weekend. I mean, a lot of crazy stuff happened. It, it really was. It was. Um, let me ask you. I We talk a lot about coaches, and normally it's me ripping on them. But is it possible that Whittingham in Utah, obviously the dude's happy there. I think he's been there for ages. Is it possible he's one of the best coaches in college football that if he went to a top-tier program could really just fill right in or make someone – like another, another level up. I mean, if you just look at the consistency, the dudes had, right. I think his bowl record is like 14 and two. He he's, it just, you know, like, I, I just think he's one of those coaches where if he was to fill in for Harbaugh, Michigan, or, you know, I, I just think that he, you know, obviously he's on, I know like the hoorah raw guy, like PJ Fleck, but I think that if you can consistently have a really good program, for like 10 years in a row at a, at a place like Utah, it would be kind of fun for him to go to a, a, a top edge program and just, just show off the skills he has, you know, cause we, we hear so much about all these guys in the sec, like, you know, Dan Mullen and Kirby smart and all these sec guys. And like, that coach from old Miss, we hear a lot about him too. Damn straight. Hell yeah. Um, I, I just think I would like to, and I, he probably won't clearly the dude is very content. Like I said, he's getting a good pay job. He's got a help program. I would like to see Whittingham go somewhere else because he could probably become a coach that the regular college football fan doesn't know of. And he'd be a household name like immediately. Like Michigan would probably love to have him come in and do do what he's done in Utah and bring it over. Just random statement. But Chris, to consistently be, I would say, an above average program, that, that dude's probably a sneaky, a really good coach. It's just a shame that he's just very content. Uh, being the coach for the Utes. Yeah, I mean, a couple things. I mean, Harbaugh was a very consistent coach coming into Michigan. So I don't True. know if I'd use that exactly because he had a better run at Stanford um, and, than he has at Utah. And they haven't won. First of all, they don't play in a Power 5. Oh, my bad, my bad. Pac-12 is a Power 5. My bad, my bad. But he hasn't won that conference yet. So I think that has to play into it. But you make a great point on if. If he did uh, into the ACC, SEC, Big 12, Big 10, whatever, a a, a big, a higher profile name, um, 
yeah, I think you make a good point because he's been solid. Uh, you know, he recruits at a level that he it's not like crazy, but he develops. And yeah, I mean, they, they've been they've been really, really solid. And, and it does seem like he's happy there because, you know, some guys are happy with the pressure not being in a pressure cooker or they're just happy True. at their job or whatever. Um, I think he's got to win the conference, though, too. I think that plays into it a little bit. But, yeah, I think he could uh, – I think you're right about he's just as good as coach as some of the other guys um, that we think um, is good or not or great or whatever. I think you make a really good point about that. Um, and sometimes you think, well, it's it's going to go really good, and it doesn't, like at Nebraska – that got beat by uh, Minnesota, who had 33 players out and played at, at during the game. 22. Uh, Nebraska was trying to sue the Big Ten. Um, too bad they don't get any of that Longhorn money. Oh wait, that's right. There's no Big 12 network. Anyway, 24 to 17, my Gophers are going to now play Wisconsin in the championship week thing, where every if you can make it anyway. Every Big Ten team gets that ninth, well, what should have been a ninth. Most of them don't have nine uh, games, obviously. But the Badgers and the Gophers are back on after 117 straight. It's 118 now. So that's a pretty dope uh, way to end the season that way because we don't even know what the hell the Bulls stuff is going to be. BYU, you wondered, are they going to be a little pissed off, um, you know, losing that game? Like you said, they didn't have to step up and schedule. Now, another thing about BYU is their schedule sucked. So it's a lot easier to be like, oh, we'll go play them. But their other schedule, like we mentioned, would have been damn good. They ended up with 28-14, to 14, getting the job done. Rutgers, who's now won multiple Big Ten games, they won in overtime over Maryland 27-24. Um, Penn State. Beat Michigan State. That was a 15 and a half point spread on Monday. It closed at 14 and a half. Penn State won by 15. Vegas does know what you're doing, but you got to get the, the the bet in early so you could have maybe won there. Uh, that Memphis Houston game, another hardcore barn burner. That was a fun game. Memphis actually came into that as a really slight underdog. They ended up winning 30 to 27 in a tight game. Um, just a variety of fun games. Any other games that you want to talk about before we uh, move on, sir? Uh, I will just say that, um, speaking of coaches who've been around forever, um, I won Kirk Ferentz is might be the, probably the longest tenure in all of college football. D1, I, for sure, power five, probably D1. Um, but they played a Wisconsin team who... <laughs> Much like Utah, and actually a more prevalent program than Utah, if we're looking at rankings, um, is having a rough year. I mean, I don't, you know, to some extent, there. I think there becomes a, a, I don't even know what the word is, a haze that comes over coaches to where this is our program, this is our offense, this is what we do. But how effing long can an offensive coordinator not just, okay, hey, let's try 5-1. Let's try something different. Because for the love of God, if you're a truly a Badger football fan, in the last three games, you've scored 7-6-7. Seven, and seven. Like, how are you not pulling out your hair? I watched that game because I, I live bet Iowa, I, I and I won the bet pretty easily. Um, Wisconsin's only touchdown of the game was off a muffed punt, which was a dumbass decision. And the Badgers had like a three play 35 yard drive. So you've essentially played three games and scored 13 points. I, Cause that was just a stupid play. So I, it just amazed me, Chris. Okay. Let's uh, off tackle, right off tackle, left up the middle, tight end pass. Like how can a, a, a decent program um, lose three? I just, I don't know. It, it just blows my mind to see the same play calls or not have a different quarterback or do something different. I'd be, again, neither of a, you know, I'm, I'm more of a Badger fan, obviously more than you because of my uh, family's friends connections, but, but dude, to score seven, six and seven, and you're supposed to be a respectable big 10 program. Um, maybe the high, the, the, the great performance you put on week one against Illinois was just kind of a, a, a lucky moment. 
because dude, that's you're you're averaging less points a game than like Akron. And Akron was our crafty, crafty pick of the week. It it just blows my mind how a team can be so shitty offensively for a team that's normally a, at least respectable offensively. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you're right. You are right. Now, you know, COVID does play a part. They have, I think, True. three offensive linemen out. So, when you, when you you know, there's not a ton of teams that could have three of their starting offensive linemen out and be some sort of an offensive juggernaut, especially when, you know, the mold that they have, they have guys that are junior, you know, redshirt juniors, redshirt seniors and all that. But, but I know what you're saying. I do know what you're saying. Sometimes the play call can be a little funky. Even when they've been going and only lose once a year, there's still times where you look back and go, huh, really that Russ Wilson. Other than that, that year, their, their offense has been like, mm. I mean, they've had some good years with the offense. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, I understand. I do think COVID plays a part, though, and they've been – they've had some damage at that. I mean, they, they – before the season even started, they had to take a break, and they had to take two separate breaks. So, I'm not – it's tough to get over critical, but, yes, the last three weeks, I mean, when you look at it, you're like, oh, my God. You know, but watch, they're going to, you know – bunch of young bucks they're going to play next this coming week against Minnesota and watch they'll come up and put up 40 and be like okay how do you like that and then you'll you're basically setting up for my team to get their ass kicked I don't like I, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not I don't like that is not not the I don't answer. like um no but you're right that is, that is a good point they've been struggling no doubt about it uh they just haven't been able to get out of first gear um they can't even get into second gear They've been in neutral or they're in neutral on a hill right now offensively. So that tells you a lot. You're, you're going backwards. Um, I'll tell you what. We do have a variety of good games coming up for the last week of the conference slash regular season. We know just around the corner, there's not going to be 14 freaking uh, practices this year, um, you know, that you get for bowls and stuff like that totally different it's actually coming around you know very soon actually but um the biggest game clearly the rematch between number two notre dame and number three clemson clemson nine and one obviously losing that one game now they didn't have their guy lawrence in that game um but if we're being fair about that though um you're right, like, or not you're right, but, Pete, you know, no doubt about it, you know, that they didn't have the guy. Um, but they did have three fumbles, I think two or three of them, from their stud running back. And one of them got scooped and scored because that's what the game came down to. Because DJ, the guy who's taking over next year, oh boy, had 430. 39 passing yards so it's not like they couldn't move the ball what they couldn't do is run and then what contributed to even more problems was the running back who is a stud he had 18 carries for 28 yards in that game and overall uh 33 carries for 34 yards because there was a bunch of sacks and that goes into your sack numbers too because dj had 13 carries for two yards but of course some of them were sacks um so I don't blame the quarterback for this one. So I actually, I think there'll be a difference at quarterback, no doubt, because we know he's the number one pick in the draft. But we can't blame the quarterback on that loss because he had a good game, and it really just came down to turnovers. Um, but that still says something that they weren't able to um, run the ball, which is something that they're they're normally – very capable of, and they had a late lead, 33 to 26, um, that their defense didn't show up as much as we normally see. Too. What are your, what's your feel here? One for the outcome of this rematch, and then let's say Clemson does win. About what six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, actually, that when we talked about this, we thought that's probably what's going to be the the. What, what it'll be that both of these teams will make it. Do you still think both of the teams will make it? Because now you look at Notre Dame and go, well, we have a win over Clemson 
And our only loss is the Clemson, so how couldn't you put them in? But then the second team, you know, you only lost in overtime, double overtime from Clemson's viewpoint. So what do you think will happen in the rematch? And then are these two teams in as long as Clemson wins? Oh, all right. I I think that I don't, I don't see... mean to overload you there. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I just I, I was trying to pause for an effect. <laughs> um, I don't see how Clemson doesn't just kick the shit out of them. Yeah, I, not not a fan of Dad Sweeney at all. He I, I, he drives me nuts just like Dan Mullen does. I think Dan Mullen's trying to become part Dabo to me. But I think Clemson rolls. I think if you look at the last for the last decade plus when Notre Dame's played a big game, they've normally lost. Um, I think that Clemson obviously has a, a huge reason to be motivated for this game. I think they're the more superior team. I think that um, obviously that game plan that Notre Dame had against them was incredible. I do not think that Clemson's secondary can be that awful again. And I do think that Notre Dame, I mean, their offense hasn't been flying off the chart since then. I just think that was a, a shootout game, but I don't think Notre Dame's offense can be as effective, Chris. I do think Trevor Lawrence is going to be focused. I think that Clemson's offense will be just as good or better than we saw earlier because you have a quarterback who's, again, I obviously taking nothing away from what the kid did, but Trevor Lawrence is just as good of a quarterback or even better. So I think Clemson's motivated. They have the better players. I don't think their defensive scheme can be worse and now Notre Dame's on a big platform game. And I do think if Notre Dame gets ran out the gym, I do think yeah. they might be losing out on a spot. I, I think they could, again. But as, now, as do you think seen, that, that would play into that it was a backup quarterback or something? Because I really think that if we're going to do that, then – or if they're going to do that, I should say, they're the college football ranking committee. The only thing is, it's like, well – so the running back didn't play because the running back is what the reason why Clemson won or lost his games because the running back clearly three fumbles. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, hell, I honestly really don't care about the college play, playoff ranking because it's such a fucking mess anyways. I mean, I, you got. I don't know. I think that's like, it, it's such, it's such the good old boy system. I mean, we, we, we bent rules for Ohio state. And I mean, I don't know. Uh, Iowa state being the fact that Iowa state has a legitimate chance to still make the final four is troublesome. And the fact that they're above Cincinnati, like that just really goes to show you how that the final four setup is for the top notch schools. Again, I get that Iowa state is having a nice year, but they lost to the Raging Cajuns, and they lost to Oklahoma State, and you move them up on a week when Cincinnati doesn't play, yet Ohio State doesn't play, and you fit them in the Big Twelve, Big Ten title game. So, uh, honestly, who right. really gives gives a shit if we're talking about? But for the sake of this debate, I do think that yes, if let's say Clemson wins by thirty, okay, let's say they just knock them out the gym, okay, Bama wins. Ohio State wins. Could you see A and M getting in over Notre Dame? Absolutely. Like I, I think that Notre Dame has to have a respectable effort. Um, or well, God, well, can you? I, well, I, I, I yeah, because A and M, then their 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 big win just got downgraded a little bit, whereas Notre Dame's wouldn't get downgraded. It would get true. upgraded in a sense. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I I sure track everything I just said. I think with how this is set up, unless Ohio State loses, which I really doubt they will, they're a 20-point favorite, I think the Final Four is probably going to remain the Final Four. And they, they got their boys set up. Um, so, yes, I, I, I think, okay, let's go back to step one. I would bet Clemson. I would love to tease them. Okay, again, if you're if you're in, new into gambling, okay, if you get a teaser, you're, bet, you're betting a team, you got to find a team to tease them with. So I would do a, a – I'd find a game I like with Clemson and use Clemson as like a six- or seven-point teaser – so that is, so instead of Clemson having to win by ten, they got to win by uh, four or three. I think that's a, a guaranteed bet. Um, so I would tease Clemson or bet Clemson. I think Clemson wins. I think they blow them out. Um, and then what will happen, Notre Dame? I don't know. I guess we'll see. 
Um, but as we you just said, it's going to be really hard for someone to overhop him. I'm not sure. But yeah, um, Chris, do you see? Okay, let me ask you this. What would be the game plan for Notre Dame? Um, you did have an incredible advantage in the line of scrimmage. So maybe you look mm-hmm. to maybe uh, run the ground game a bit more, try to control the time of possession. Um, I'm, I got to imagine Clemson's offense is going to be probably want to score at a pretty quick pace. So if you're a Notre Dame fan or what's your optimism, how do you find a way to win? Or do you just think, hey, you know what? Even though it was a back quarterback, we played a great game the first time. We can do it again. Yeah, I think you just stick to the same thing you did, basically. I mean, like I said, the came, the thing came down to fumbles. So, I I, I mean, they, they've been a good defense pretty much all year. Look what they did to North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. North Carolina's pretty damn good, even though they got off to a good jump and they stayed in that game. So, I, I would – I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think the game just came down to fumbles. So, I, I don't – I wouldn't change a ton if I were – you know, if I were Notre Dame, um, they're going to try that. That front seven is, I think, fairly le- legit uh, to stop the run game like that. And I, I actually threw a lot at you. Um, so we kind of went all over the place just within this matchup. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'd have to to answer that question. I'd have to really rethink of the game plan. And that's kind of a deeper question. So I sure. can't give you uh, some kind of great answer. Um I would have liked to think it through a little bit more. Um, well, uh, but I, let me like ask I you said, another... it just came down to the sure. turnover. So. Well, let me ask you another fun Why don't you just tell me then? how you feel about that? Because <laughs> right. that, that'd be better, because obviously there's something to it. Well, I, again, I, I just my, – my main point is just bet Clemson. I, I, now, I heard that the look-ahead line from Vegas was going to be seven going into the game. And I, maybe a book or two open it at seven, but I think if you would have had that line at seven, you would have seen. I mean, there would have been money being hammered left and right. So ten, it maybe makes a better pause a little bit, but even so, I'd feel pretty confident with ten. Um, so let me ask you one fun one, then we can move on to other games. Is Let's this going to be something I got to Google, or is no. this going to be something I can say? Okay, thanks. It's the right, third yeah. question of the, the fucking. <laughs> we, we already had the shoe Jeopardy question. This is. I mean, a, I know we don't have. A, Crafty, crafty pick of the week this week, but I mean, golly, keep going. The, the, all right, so let's just say Notre Dame gets smoked and Iowa State beats Oklahoma. Can Iowa State get into the four spot? So, okay, we'll um, say ba- Bama wins. I, I, know, I know, wins, I know, I know, I know. Ohio I'm State sure. wins. Notre Dame gets their ass kicked. Iowa State beats Oklahoma. Does Iowa State? Skip Florida and A&M, because obviously Florida would have lost to Bama. A&M just didn't okay. play a title game. Tough shit. The, could Iowa State be the Final Four? They could. They could. They, they could. I think with two, I, I, I do think, though, what's their second loss? Oh, our Raging Cajuns. How could I forget? I think that'll, that'll – I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think they'll do it. Plus, their name is Iowa State. You know what I mean? I'll just be honest. They're the cyclone. You know what I mean? And so Word. I think that they'd rather have Notre Dame. These 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 four teams right now they lost out on ratings. I mean they lost eight. Fox lost eighteen million dollars for not doing the Michigan Ohio State game. So they're probably just like, hey, let's just yep, okay, no problem. So no, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think Iowa State. And I was gonna say, can they even beat? Let's get to some predictions a little bit. Sure, um, sure, sure. Um, Iowa State, can they can they finish off this very, very impressive season that they've had? Can they finish it off and get the W? Or is Ohio State gonna nip or sorry, Oklahoma gonna nip him in the butt and then here we are, they get beat, they have this great season. They've already beat him once. It's tough to beat a team twice. Just ask what Notre Dame is gonna go through. Um, what do you think here? I mean they beat them 37 to 30 in the first game. Um, Purdy had one of his better games that year, as far as, or that that game as far as stats uh, for yards, because he hasn't thrown for a lot of yards this year. I mean, can, I don't know. I, I don't think so to answer your question. No, but do you think they can even beat Iowa for this, or I mean Oklahoma for the second time? I think it's really hard to look at the progression Oklahoma's made this year if they have because. Oklahoma's played a bunch of really shitty Big 12 teams. So 
So, yes, Spencer Rattler's gotten better. Yes, their defense has improved. But Oklahoma has pretty much been a 20-point favorite since that Iowa State game. So, and, and as football fans, especially as betters, you always like to say, okay, how, how has this team progressed? Who's done what? Like, how, how has this team transformed over the year? Or have they been neutral? Or have they, you know, gone backwards? Like, it's really hard to say, man, Oklahoma, since that last Iowa State, man, they've been playing great football. Well, you've been beating up on some people, but you've really played no one exceptional. So it's almost is it's I guess got to kind of imagine this is pretty much we're going to have a deja vu. It's going to be the same team. So Iowa's Iowa, Iowa State just had a shit year anyway, because they haven't beat anybody is what you're saying. No, 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 no. I'm just speaking strictly. I'm speaking strictly. If if it's the same thing with Oklahoma, then that means because they beat a ranked team in Oklahoma State um, 42 to 13. That's a, a decent win. Otherwise, we'd be just discounting Iowa State whole season then. Well, I Cause they just lost to that team twenty four to twenty one. All right, just, so okay, so they lost to Iowa State. You beat Texas this year. Texas that loss really don't mean much. Okay, you won at TCU. Okay, you, you beat, beat Texas Tech. You beat Kansas. Okay, and you beat all right, Kansas. So since is a good you, club, dude. No, I'm just <laughs> all right, so since they lost at Iowa State, they played. Um, six football games and one was a, like a respectable win. So I just, I literally don't know. I wouldn't bet this game because I just, I think these teams are probably where it's probably, I, I just don't think, I don't see what Oklahoma's done, but yeah, by, by beating TCU tech KU and Baylor, um, I just don't know if Spencer Rattler's really transformed or if Lincoln Riley just ratcheted up the offense and, Let's see what happens. I don't know. I, I just I wouldn't make a gambling prediction just because, yeah, you, you beat Oak State, who had some goofy games. Yeah, I, I got one oh, in that Oklahoma State game where Oklahoma did win against a ranked team. Oklahoma State's quarterback got hurt in the first quarter. So uh, Oklahoma really does not have an impressive win since you beat Iowa State. So if I'm going into this game with a making a prediction, I'm flipping a damn quarter because neither team has done a whole lot of shit since. So, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't bet the game. I think Oklahoma wins just because it is hard to beat a team twice. But I wouldn't bet I wouldn't bet a dime on the game just because I think we're going to have a close game like usual. And, again, I, I just don't know what to expect from Oklahoma. Man, I'm sorry, Iowa State. He just shit on your whole season, dude. Um, but they've had a good year. I don't, I don't care what you're saying. Because we've all the way up to this, we've, we've agreed on that. But I understand what you're saying. I think it's just tough to beat a team a second time because it's not like they've devoured them the first time either. Here's a pick 'em game. Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, the, obviously the, the, the squad um, that, that we, you know, that has a win over Iowa State, by the way. Um, they obviously, you know, earlier in the year did have a slip up. To the Coastal Carolina Club here, they beat them 30 to 27. This is about two months ago. Are the Raging Cajuns going to rage back and end up winning the conference over the 11 and 0? 11, they got 11 games in. Wow, that's impressive. Oh man, this this all right. This one stuff because we've. We adopted the Rage and Cajuns like eight or nine years ago. It's always been our adopted team. And you can't help but kind of just love that. You're not going to try to adopt another kid. It's a step kid. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Keep yeah, going. yeah. So, right. But no, I, I, I'm I, I'm picking um, Coastal to win. I think that from watching the both of these teams play, there's been a lot of moments here where the Rage and Cajuns offense has not been as fluid as Coastal's offense. I think Coastal has a better offense, and I think defensively they're pretty similar. So I'm taking the team with the better offense and who has all the confidence in the world against the team who's kind of, well, honestly, it's mm. just been, I, I know. Trying. I, I, I know. I, I feel I feel sick I, this doing this. This show's but. been rough, dude. This is, this is I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I'm I'm picking Coastal to win just because their offense I think is just better. Um, but if our Raging Cajuns win, uh, I'm not going to shed a tear. 
They better not do that to the Raging Cajuns quarterback, I'll tell you that. Then we got a problem. Dude, you, you, you do that. There, there's going to be some boys pushing back. It won't just be the BYU quarterback um, getting beat up there. Getting knowing, beat you know, up. There's, yeah. there's going to be a good old midfield scrap if that happens. That dude's more of a running quarterback, too, so I think he'll be able to dip out anyway. He'll be like, yeah. No, I'm yeah. out of here. I saw that tape. Uh, I'm going opposite just based off of bloodlines. Um, Louis, hey, and I'm a stepchild, so I'm not, I'm not – you know, you got to love the steps. But it's still, you know, I mean, your first born is what I'm saying. Louisiana, True. I'm going Rachel Cages, but that is a good call. I was actually a tad surprised at the three and a half. I thought it'd be about five, six and a half. But then again, um, they did have a tight ass game. So I'm assuming that the Raging Cajuns are going to rage back. We both think Alabama's going to win. You think Florida, Lucy Goosey, Florida, um, as long as they keep their cleats on and don't throw any other cleats, you think that they can – Sneak under that 17, or, or I think that's a fair line. I'd actually probably go Alabama by 17. Um, do you think they can sneak under and just kind of um, – shot? that'd be a shocker just to get under 17. That Bama offense has just been dismantling. They're, I think they're averaging around like – it seems like 42 a game. So if you're averaging around 42 a game – and yeah. you have a wide receiver who's getting Heisman talk. I just that I they're on they're on a war path. And I um, don't think that tight end's returning either. I well they were talking about on the Florida LSU game. They talk about how they're keeping him out as precaution so he's ready for this game. So I I think oh, there's okay. a chance that Boy, this that, plays that nipped him in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Hey, let's let's keep him out for this game. Because we we're, we know we're gonna win it. I mean, yeah, coach, coach we're we're a twenty three point favorite. Let's let let's let uh, Kyle Pitts just sit out this one. Okay. Dang. Well, yeah, and right, they yeah. messed up Pitts. Now dude. again, that that was speculation from the reporters on the field, but I mean, you know, those ESPN guys they know as much as we do, or you know, or plenty more. So, yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I I I would not bet against Bama. I've been having a lot of betting takes this show. If you listen to one thing I say. I, I would I would strongly urge you not to bet against Bama because I could easily see Bama winning forty eight to to twenty or you know I that offense is clicking actually and Saban's really got that defense looking too the the secondary stats I've heard from Bama this past week were actually like really impressive like the everything is falling into place at the start of the year Bama's defense was a little shaky but again like usual Saban makes adjustments throughout the year. Gets the kids, gets the kids to get better. Like everything falls into place for him, like normal. Um, yeah, that that defense is good. Their secondary is good. The offense is insane. You got three damn people up for the Heisman on your offense. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not touching Florida. And we could see a loosey goosey Florida team or one that just said that is Man. mentally checked out because right. you just had a a heartbreaking loss to your potential season to make the Final Four. Yeah, it's very true. And then last but not least, or pretty much last but not least, undefeated Cincinnati ranks 17th in the country. No, I'm just kidding. Rank, uh, eight, no. They've had a damn good season uh, um, against Tulsa, who, you know, has a good defense, good team. They haven't really been able to put up points, and they give up a buck 45 on the ground which going in against Cincinnati is not necessarily the best one there. Um, what do you think here? Cincinnati had a really tight game two weeks ago or two or three weeks ago uh, against UCF. They ended up getting it done 36 to 33. But other than that, they pretty much cruise. Can Tulsa come up and nip them in the, in the, in the butt and just ruin their whole season? Uh, Tulsa has been a really awful first half team this year. And almost every game I watch theirs, I don't know why some teams just have these weird trends. And I think if you get behind, it seemed like Cincinnati, whose defense has been really good all year. And as you mentioned, statistically is going to run the ball down your throat, especially if Tulsa's defense comes out sluggish. I just, I think Cincinnati gets the win. I think he had an extra week to prep. You got the better defense, clearly got a better offense. I, I I think this game could be close. I think the spread might be okay, but I think Cincinnati wins. And then 
you know, they're probably going to be undefeated and get screwed, you know, whatever. But, I um, mean, yeah, I think Cincinnati keeps the zero on their record, and I think they pull out a victory. I just, Tulsa has been too inconsistent to beat a team in Cincinnati who's been about as consistently good as you can be for a team in their conference this year. Um, do you think Tulsa beats Indiana? Neutral field. Uh, it's probably too late to get into this. Yeah. I, I, I just put fire on the flame. Um, the current, uh, the, the current Indiana team. Yes. The with Penix, I, I think it, I, I would probably favor Indiana by like Indiana's probably a three to four point favorite. I would imagine Indiana, uh, full strength would be a three point, uh, favorite over Tulsa. I, I would, I would, uh, I mean, with with my gambling knowledge, which is somewhat decent, I would say they're probably, I mean, hell, I, I would guess probably a, a, around a four, yeah, four and a half point favorite. I, w- I would assume that's just my gambling chart in my head. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, hell, I don't know. Speculation, but yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, all this is anyway. Sure. All right. Well, um, Anything else that you like? I said my my uh, the Big Ten's playing um, Northwestern Ohio State. We both think Ohio State's going to win that. Uh, but the Michigan Maryland, Michigan Iowa Illinois Penn State Purdue Indiana. Some of these are rivalries. Um, Purdue Indiana obviously, and then of course my squad Minnesota in Wisconsin playing. Wisconsin's a twelve point favorite. Uh, just so you know. Uh, 12 point favorite. They haven't even scored 12 points in eight weeks, but they, but they're a 12 point favorite. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and like I said, watch, they're going to put up 40. Um, anything else you'd like to discuss, sir, before we, uh, tap out. All right. So I, I think my, I think my Trojans win again, maybe, I don't know how, maybe if we win, we could, if, if the world explodes, we could make the final four. That'd be cool. Um, you just, were you not going to talk about, Lane Kiffin, did he do something to offend you, or am I, am I missing? Did I miss the the memo on the prep? Uh, I just um, I don't. I, I, <laughs> I missed the memo on the 14 questions in the prep, but um, that's why I'm passing it off to you, sir, to let let you close down. Unless you want to break down the Florida State Wake Forest game, we can. Well, I mean, the, these these are two incredible coaches I highly respect. Um, and the rage and Kate, no, hell, the rage and Kate. Uh, good old old Miss is walking into uh, uh, good old Death Valley. Unfortunately, there's no fans there because, hell, I would I would go to that game in a heartbeat, actually. I, w- I would be. I believe you, too. I think you would. That, that would be I would get to see my favorite coach and I would get to see a game in Death Valley. That would be actually badass. Or just like this past weekend. I mean, Missouri played George. They got killed. Then Missouri played um, Illinois in basketball on the same day on campus. Like I, I've been, I've, I've been dying for a road trip. It, it feels like the World Series I went to of the Nationals and Astros feels like about five years ago now with the way this calendar has moved this year. Um, yeah. but yes, I think that Old Miss LSU will be a fun game to watch. The over under seventy four. <laughs> God Almighty. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's going to go over 74. And then my other boys I love, on top of USC and Ole Miss, uh, Kiffin love, is uh, Mizzou. Mizzou plays uh, the cover, the good old Mike Leach, the ball coach. Um, I'll say this about him, Chris. He got a ton of credit for beating LSU the first game of the year. And then he, he you know, <laughs> he, he's a guy that makes, he ruffles some feathers. Like, there's people that don't like him. And Ferris, he, he, he's his own dude. Well, especially but, if you're that kid that's left alone in a room after a concussion, but we won't get into that. But uh, you know, see, so he, he people people like him or hate him, but he, he's now for the past three weeks now I think had about 47 scholarship players, but they've been going out lot for the guy. So I think he's got a squad now. He's got a quarterback now. So honestly, Mizzou at Mississippi State should be a fun one to watch. I hope my Mizzou boys win. I hope Ole Miss wins on the road. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to remind you. That there were some uh, SEC games you just you know didn't want to touch because I was gonna give love. And lastly, um, San yeah, Jose I was State. Say we got one more game. Yep, that's it. That's a good game. Such a such a cool story. Now again, they're they're an underdog. They probably can't beat Boise, but 
five or six years ago, this was one of the worst programs in the whole nation. Like San Jose State, like you probably not many people probably ever heard of them. They had like um, I'm sure that I'm sure their weight room was shit. I'm sure you can't get any players like everything about that program was bad. But that coach came in and just has a team six and oh, you're playing for a conference title in the Mountain West, which is not like a, a joke of a conference. I mean, it's Boise's been good. So how cool of a story would it be to win the Mountain West Conference when five to 10 years ago you were one of the worst programs out of 115 in the country? I, I hope they do. Um, their Boise offense has been pretty good this year. Boise State can't stop the run. Boise State can't stop the run. I'm picking my boys. What are they, six-point underdog? I'm, they I'm are. Picking them. I'm picking them. I don't care. This is an emotional pick, just so you know. And according, we almost forgot this, according to ESPN's power football power index, 68% they're going with Boise State. They're going with the Broncos. But you know what? There's no cheerleader uh, tailback connection on this team. So I don't see, you know, the marriage thing. I don't see a Broncos tailback saying, will you marry me after a victory? I see San Jose spoiling their wedding. All right. To wrap up the show, this is too good to be true. We, we, we're, we're 10 and three on the year. We got to have, we got to have one more, Chris. It, it's out. I, I scrolled through. It's out there. We got one knockout. Dude, why, why are you doing this to our betters, dude? I mean, do you just want them to lose? Or do you want, maybe it's me. You want me to pick wrong. Because this, this is a crappy game of We've the week. We've never done crafty, crappy pick of the week in this section here. But All right, a, go but, ahead. Uh, it's a regular season game. put a preference game. on this. Ten and three, it's over, okay? Ten and right. three. Ten and three the on the year. season's done. You got me picking an extra game this year. Now I'm picking a, a second extra game? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, when, when, when you've been friends with someone for 12 years, you know, you, it is what it is. We're all good, brother. All right. So we we got ourselves a doozy because one of these schools. Is I'm known picking for, a tie. How about that? A tie. <laughs> I don't I don't think a tie in regulation. That'd actually be a really good prop bet. That's probably like plus seven hundred off, off the bat. I, I respect that. Okay. I think at tie. half they're gonna fail at the halftime. They'll fail COVID tests. All right. Okay. Or or a lightning strike. A lightning strike could occur. All right. So we have we have two schools. Who uh one's known for football and they're trash, or one's not known for football and they got more wins on here than the football team. <laughs> so to wrap it up, Evo, this is our dessert piece. This is the brownie on top of the cake. Okay, Chris had a 10 and 3 year. Um, we're going to the Big Ten. <laughs> this game's actually on the Big Ten network. And you have the once proud black shirt defense. Now, when I started watching football as a kid, it was Tommy Frazier, Lawrence Phillips, and they had Tom Osborne, they had a sick-ass team uh, that no longer applies against Rutgers. This is the game where Nebraska, at the end of the year, is playing a Rutgers who, who has more wins on the season than they do. I never thought I would say that even in a weird year, where at the end of the season, your last game, Rutgers has more wins than Nebraska. Chris, I want you to gladly enjoy a game where, where the Rutgers Scarlet Knights have a better record, yet are not favored in the ESPN FPI index. Go ahead, sir. Well, um, uh, can they rise to the occasion? So this is a crappy game, no doubt about it. The Nebraska is only averaging 22 points. They're both giving up over 30 it definitely qualifies. It's a late qualifier, obviously, because I've already had to do an extra pick. This guy's got me. Do I get extra overtime money for this, too? Um, neither of them can stop the run. My God. When, when, when I come home for Christmas, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a bottle of liquor. My God. Um, this one is a tough one. Um, let me see here. The, I mean, the Rutgers, they've been playing so good lately, too, that I just uh, they they won last week in overtime you know what ah. is chris gonna pit rutgers on the college football podcast well i was actually trying to not pick nebraska i've been thinking rutgers the whole time i've been trying not i've been trying to stay away from the nebraska pick but i'm looking and i'm looking but i'm going with the rutgers university of Rutgers. the rutgers 
The Scarlet Knights is what I meant. The Scarlet Knights will get the job done. I don't know how. They're not, you know, they, they, they've just improved a little bit. I believe in the coach. Uh, they play after the whistle because I remember that Tampa game, Tampa Bay game when they were trying to hurt somebody when someone was taking a knee. We played to the whistle um, and passed the whistle if we need to. So they're going to play. Nebraska, they're still looking for their lawsuits uh, for the Big Ten. So I'm going Rutgers to get the job done. Rutgers, Scarlet Knights will close at a 4-5 and five season and I'll have an 11-3 season, but if I lose, it doesn't count. <laughs> I love it. Um, moving forward, I will say, um, we the, the bowl games here, a lot of teams are already dropping out of bowls. Um, we normally do have a, a fun show where we kind of predict bowl games because there's normally like 36 to choose from. Um, obviously, this year, if you're a college football fan, I know we all love bowl season just because it kind of leads to such a crazy shit show kind of the year. Um, I do know some teams are going to play in bowl games. Obviously, Chris, as you know, like some top notch teams are not going to want to pass one up. But I think our lower tier random Poinsettia stripe bowls are probably not going to yeah. happen this year. So we, there will be some college football bowl games. And I'll Hopefully see some of these goes bankrupt. Hopefully some of these these bowls go bankrupt during this yeah. time. It's the only thing I want bankrupt is the bowls. So we there we we will have a probably a, a fun little bowl show. It probably won't be as fun as we've had before. But we normally have like one to go over the first set and then one to go over the more serious set. Um, but as Chris, as we were saying before the show to wrap this up, we do get games on New Year's Eve this year. So sorry on New Year's Day. So you can go out for New Year's Eve, have your fun, enjoy some cocktails, be uh thankful that 2020 is over and 2021 starts on new year so to the first day of 2021 should be two great football games we hope so to wrap up this show um i'm hoping for an upset um a lot of the games chris i just talked about were pretty decent big spreads um obviously the our raging cajuns i say are i I think they're gonna lose but they're still that's still my adopted son I, that's a close points for it. But besides that, um, if, if by chance Bama, Clemson or Ohio state lose next week's going to be a really fun podcast. I don't know if it can happen, but you don't know that that would make for a really fun podcast. So until then, um, stay safe. I hope everyone is wearing a mask, enjoying time with their family. Um, it's been such a long year. We really got to enjoy the holidays, especially for, the way this crazy year has been. So thanks you for listening to the podcast. The boys are out tonight. Peace.